Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Points of Articulation. My name's Dave and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Today I'm looking at the Star Wars X-Wing Fury of the First Order Squadron Pack released in 2021. This set features two different vehicles. The first one is the TIE Whisper, which was first seen in Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. And the second is the TIE SE Bomber, also known as the First Order TIE Bomber, which was first seen in Star Wars Allegiance, which is a comic. Now, truth be told, out of all the expansions and squadron packs, this is one that I've been very eager to pick up. And I'm sorry I didn't review it sooner, it's just I had a lot of stuff going on. This pack gives us everything we need to add these ships to our First Order squadron. We're talking tokens, dials, rules, you name it, this pack comes with it, and we'll take a look at that later. But what I really love is the two brand new ships. We have our TIE Whisperer, which looks very cool, and then, probably my favorite in the pack, the TIE Bomber. And what I love about the First Order is that every single design they have, let it be a walker or even a TIE Fighter, is designed to be more deadly. And I love the predatory artwork that goes into these ships. And as we'll see with the TIE Whisperer and also the TIE Bomber, they are predators. They're built to look hungry. And I think that the TIE Bomber really, really hits home with that. The wings are inverted. We have a lot of angles on there, extra weaponry in the form of laser cannons, and it's beefed up with armor, and I couldn't be happier with these ships. For the sizes, for the TIE Whisper, we're looking at under 3 inches or a tad over 7 centimeters long, and for the TIE Bomber, we're looking at about 2.5 inches or a tad over 6 centimeters. So a very nice size. Now before I get to the review, I do want to say one thing. I was able to get this squadron pack and many other expansions at Red Seal Gaiman. Now they used to be located in South Amboy, New Jersey, but have currently moved to a new location in Matawan, and I couldn't be happier for those guys. The owner's name is Dan, and he really has a solid crew. There are tons of people going to this game shop, and it is amazing. If you live in the New Jersey area, and you're into Magic the Gathering, D&D, Warhammer, X-Wing, Armada, or other tabletop games, I really recommend you go check them out. It's a great place, and it would really mean a lot to me if you guys went to the Discord, or just checked out their other social media platforms, and tell them Dave sent you. Now, I personally get nothing out of this, but I feel like, especially nowadays, we need something like this in our community. A place where everybody is welcome, everybody is so friendly, and it's a great spot. It really is. So if you feel inclined to, please check the links in the description below and go check them out. So enough of that rant, let's get to this review. If you're new to my channel, what I'm going to do is go over the dials, tokens, cards, and rules. We're going to look at the mold, the paint, put it on a stain, compare it to some other pieces, and then we'll be done. So let's get started. All right, so now it's time for the dial token roll call. Up first, we have three ship dials, seven ship tokens, which are double-sided, three focus tokens, three strain tokens, three evade tokens, four jam tokens, six shield tokens, two disarm tokens, three stress tokens, three deplete tokens, two critical hit markers, three ion tokens, 12 charge tokens, three force charge tokens, two cloak tokens, one turret arc indicator, two fuse markers, nine lock tokens for number 14, 13, and 12, nine ship ID tokens for 14, 13, and 12, two concussion bombs, two electro shaft clouds, and finally, three dial ID tokens. So that does it for all the dials and tokens. So now let's take a look at those cards. And now moving on to the cards, we will begin with the ship cards. Like in all my previous reviews, I will read the name of the card if you would like to pause and read all the stats below. By all means, go right ahead and continue when you're done. 
In this set, we have a total of 50 cards, 14 ship cards, 32 upgrade cards, and four quick build cards. So let's get started. First up, we have Kylo Ren, Nightfall, Whirlwind, Wrath, 709th Legion Ace, Red Fury Zealot, Breach, Dread, Grudge, Scorch, two First Order Cadets, and for our final ship cards, we have two Sinar Gemis Test Pilots. So that does it for the ship cards, so now let's look at the quick build cards. Looking at these quick build cards, here's the first one. Here's the second. Here's the third. And finally, here is the fourth. So that does it for all the quick build cards, so now let's take a look at the upgrades. Now looking at these upgrade cards, first up we have two feedback pings, two ion limiter overrides, two compassions, two malices, two shattering shots, advanced optics, primed thrusters, two sensor scramblers, ion torpedoes, cluster missiles, Homan missiles, proton rockets, two electro shaft missiles, DT-798, two first order ordnance techs, two suppressive gunners, two concussion bombs, two delayed fuses, two engine upgrades, and finally, an enhanced jamming suit. So that does it for all the cards that come in this particular set, so now let's take a look at the rules. Now looking at the rules real quick, on the first page we have our titles, Star Wars X-Wing, Fury of the First Order, we have a brief write-up, and then all the components we get in this particular set. On page 2 we have new rules, it talks about deplete tokens, electro shaft clouds, fuse markers, and also strain tokens. And I can't ignore the art, which is continued onto page 3, but we can see some First Order TIE Fighters, as well as some B-Wing Starfighters, and this particular one is on fire, so pretty epic. On page 3, besides the art continued to show the TIE Whisper, we have some more new rules, such as devices. It talks about concussion bombs, as well as the electro shaft clouds, so really interesting stuff here. And finally, on page 4, we have all our copyright crap, the credits, if you will, of all the people that worked on this particular project. And that does it for the rules, so that covers our dials, tokens, cards, and our rulebook pamphlet that comes in this set. So now, let's start taking a look at these beautiful ships. Alright, so let's look at the mold first on the TIE SE First Order TIE Bomber. This is a beautiful looking ship. You can see all the detail in here. And we're going to have a closer look in just a few. But very nice, very unique. And that's what I love about it. Also, it's very predatory. Nice. So, just like in all my reviews, I'm going to go over all the major sections. And then we'll get a nice close-up look to see those fine details. So, let's begin. Right here, we have our transparisteel viewport. Looking good, all the windows are recessed in. Over here, we have our ordnance pod with missile port. So, really cool, or missile launcher, if you will. So, very nice. I think that looks great. Looking at the top of our two pods, we can see some beautiful detailing. Coming to the aft section, we have our twin ion engines. Just look at all that. Very nicely done. On the bottom, we have our peg port. Looking good. Nice details again. And then we have our pylons, which are all beefed up. Nice. Looking over here, we have our wing brace. Solar array panel wings, which look pretty good. And I love the fact that they're inverted. Really nice. And then looking at the wing tips, 
we have our laser cannons. And then in the center, we have our targeting sensors. So pretty nice. All in all, a fantastic looking ship. So now let's get a closer look. And now having a closer look at the TIE Bomber, this thing is full of details. Just look at it. Panel lines, modules, crevices. Just, it has everything. Nothing really is flat either. I think these two sections on the sides of the pylons are the flattest pieces we're going to see on this whole thing. Just amazing. We have our peg port for the stand. Ordnance pod on the right, cockpit on the left. Beautiful. Turning it up like so. Right here, we have our missile port. You can see how it recesses in a little bit. Nicely molded, center section. We have our cockpit with our transparent steel viewport. Each window is recessed in, which is a very nice touch. FFG does not disappoint. And of course, our reinforced pylons, which look amazing. Looking at the top of the vessel, you can see the detailing continues and it looks amazing. Now, there is no schematic for these vessels yet. They are basically brand new, so there's no books about them or anything like that but amazing amounts of detail. And I love this, it, it looks great. Leading to the aft section, and I'll turn it around this way. We have our twin ion engines. And just look at the detailing in here. Amazing stuff. Just really cool. I think this came out great. And then looking at the bottom again. So let's continue on to the wings. First, we have our solar array panels, which look pretty good. You can see all the detailing on them. Fantastic. And that's the same for each side. Everything's molded pretty much the same. And it looks amazing. Very nice. And it's uh, missing the aft piece. But it gives it that predatory look, which is what we're all about, right? And of course, the interiors, nicely done as well. And each side is the same. All in all, fantastic work on here. And then the exterior is very nice. Now, besides those solar panels, we do have our wing brace and all these supports. And you can see the detail in here is amazing. Nothing's flat. Everything has these little sections built on there. And it looks great. We have our targeting sensor in the center. And then our laser cannons on the tips. Beautiful. And the same goes for the other side. It's the same mold for the most part. For the interior... Just look at the detail and around that pylon and wing brace. Now, a lot of books say that this section here is actually like a little power center where the energy is converted from the wings into this and then it could power the vessel. So pretty cool. And the underneath. Very nice. It's the same for this side. Just beautiful. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you like this vessel? Excellent stuff, in my opinion. So that does it for the mold for the TIE Bomber. So now let's look at the TIE Whisper. And now looking at the TIE Whisper or the TIE WI. This is a modified first order interceptor. And it looks amazing. I love this thing. Now looking at it closely... It looks like it's components of the TIE Silencer mixed with a First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter. And what I mean by that is we have a reinforced hull. We have our antenna right there. And then if you look closely, and we'll get a better look at this when we zoom in, we have our turret on the bottom. 
an aft window, and we have our ion engines, and it's very similar to a First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter in that regard. But amazing. So, just like all the other ships, let's go over the main points. So on the top we have our cockpit hatch, which looks very good, all the windows are recessed, which leads us to the main transparent steel viewport, looking good. We have our comms antenna, our pylons on the side. On the bottom, we have our laser cannons, which look great. On the bottom, we have our peg port. Right here above my thumb, we already mentioned it, but we have our aft cannon, looking dope. And then on the back, we have our ion engines and aft window, looking very sharp. Now for the wings, they are very sleek, very cool looking. We have our wing brace, our solar array panel wings going around. On the tips, we have laser cannons, which looks great. In the center, we have heavy laser cannons. And then the two little cylinders on the top and bottom, those are targeting sensors. All in all, a fantastic looking vessel. So let's get a closer look. All right, having a closer look, we're gonna begin looking at the wing sections. So right in the center, we have our wing brace, our power plant, all that fun stuff. And look at all the mold in here. Just beautiful, I love that. Right in the front, we have our targeting sensors and also our heavy laser cannon, which is painted and looks pretty good. You see all little details on the barrel there great touch and we'll have a closer look at that in just a few but looking at the supports here and the solar array wings looking very good nicely detailed even at the top just beautiful coming up to the tip with our laser cannons looking fantastic very nice and we have the bottom Cool. And the same goes for the other side. You know, very identical. There's not really any differences. They're beautifully done. Now, for the interiors, they are the same. Again, we have our laser cannons. And then you can see the support beams and our solar array panels. Looking pretty good. Here we have our targeting sensors and heavy laser cannon from the other view. Looking very nice. And then moving in towards our pylon, you can see some beautiful looking details there as well. Pretty nice. Very difficult ship to film, but cool nonetheless. And then we have our aft section here. Just look at all that very cool and you can see how thick the wing is pretty interesting right the other side here looking dope and you can see how both sides are identical there's no real difference between the two they just look awesome right nice now, for the uh, pylons and cockpit sphere, um, how should I do this? Let's start with the front, and hopefully this looks good for all of you at home. Again, like my thumb doesn't even fit into this section, <laughs> if I turn it like that. So I am zoomed in as much as I can. Uh, before we actually look at the cockpit, here we could have a nice view of our targeting sensors and also our heavy laser cannon. And you can see how that's molded there. Some interesting shapes here, right? Pretty cool. For the pylons, it looks like a normal TIE fighter, except armored, which is awesome. Same goes for this side. And that armor continues on to the actual sphere here, where we could see our support beams our transparasteel viewport with recessed windows. The paint's a little off on those windows, but cool nonetheless. 
We have our targeting sensors and laser cannons on the bottom. Comms array right here at the top, which looks good. Just very nice. And looking at the pylons from the back view, we can see how they are detailed going all the way around. Looking very nice. Same goes for this side. Looking cool. Love the designs on here. And then the bottoms. Again, really interesting. Pretty cool, right? Now for the sphere on the back, we have our ion engines, our aft window, some panel lines, little modules here and there looking good on the top we have our cockpit hatch with windows looking amazing very nice and then on the bottom we have our little turret here for the aft gun so that's pretty cool we have some nice designs down here which looks pretty amazing and then a peg port for our stand all in all really interesting cool ship and that's everything i have to say about the mold on the tie bomber and tie whisper i think these are very detailed models full of nooks and crannies and that great attention to detail that ffg is known for at this point beautiful vessels so now let's take a look at the paint All right, let's take a look at the paint on the Fury of the First Order models. First up, we have the TIE Bomber. This one has a bunch of different colors as we saw zoomed in. Not only do we have black for the main color, but there's little dabs of very dark gray. If you go back in the video and really have a close look at it, you'll see there is major color differences. Also, we have white for our wings, red, some maroon and gray for our supports, and all in all, a very beautifully painted piece and you can't forget it does have some black wash on there on the main body which really gets in all those nooks and crannies and makes this bad boy pop well done Up next, we have the TIE Whisper, which is another great looking vessel. Paint wise, we have black for the main color, followed by white for the solar array wings, which looks amazing. In the aft, we have maroon for our windows, red for our armored section, as well as red for our laser cannons. As the ship turns, you can see it is nicely painted, very beautifully done. And then we have red for our targeting sensors and heavy laser cannons, red for the front, and also we have maroon for our window and a transparent viewport. I know this ship is moving very quickly, but trust me, this one's actually painted pretty well. And now looking at the stand that comes with these ships, we should be a pro at this by now. We get two little rods we connect together to make one pylon. We get our base, plug it in like so, grab your vessel, peg the port into the stand, just like so, be gentle. And just like that, everybody, you are good to go. And now for a quick size comparison with the Fury of the First Order seen on the left hand side, we have some other X-Wing vessels. On the right, we have the First Order TIE Fighter, which looks amazing. And then in the center right, we have the TIE Silencer. And you can see how the Silencer and the TIE Whisper are very close in scale and size. So very cool. All these ships are great in their own way. And for an added bonus size comparison with the Fury of the First Order seen on the left, I have the first edition of X-Wings, Kylo Ren's Command Shuttle. This thing is awesome. I love the detail, the shape, and guess what? The wings are able to open and close, and it looks fantastic. I love how these things go together. Very nice.
And that does it today for my review of the Star Wars X-Wing Fury of the First Order Squadron Pack released in 2021. As I mentioned before in this video, I was really excited to find and get this pack. Having it in hand, I'm so glad I made that choice. Yes, it comes with all the dials and tokens, rules, everything you need to add these to your particular squadron, but what I really love about this set are the ships themselves. As we saw looking very close up at them and also looking at their paint, they are nicely done on the whole, and I think where these particular pieces shine is in their molds, especially the Thai Bomber. I think that one is the cream of the crop, and some people may disagree and basically love the TIE Whisper, which they should, it's a great ship, but I think detail-wise and mold-wise and all that stuff, the TIE Bomber is a home run. Beautifully executed, everything's there that should be, and it's a great miniature. It really is. And the TIE Whisper's not too far behind. I think they're both great in their own ways, but my particular favorite in this set is the Thai Bomber. Nicely done. Now when it comes to the paint, there are tiny miniature mess ups on these pieces. Now when I say miniature, I am zoomed in to the point where the iPhone doesn't want to zoom anymore, unless it has like an exterior lens you could attach. And that's when we start to see all these little mess ups here and there. I think the Thai Whisper only had some paint mishaps on the front transparasteel viewport, and the Thai Bomber only had about one little black dot on a solar array wing, and also a little red dot on one of the engines. But besides that, they were spotless. I thought they did a great job painting these. Again, I'm showing you everything that these have to offer, so that way you know what you're getting when you buy one of these. So I gotta talk about the good and also the bad. But the thing about this is when you get these and you put them on a shelf or you're playing a tabletop game, you're never gonna get that close to see these little paint mishaps. So keep that in mind. Now remembering that this is a part of a miniature tabletop game, these ships do come with stands. They work well as we saw and when you have them all together on a shelf, they look amazing together. And roughly all the ships are in the same scale. I believe it's like 121 or something around those lines. So excellent stuff. They really look sharp. And that's everything I have to say about this squadron pack today. I think this is great. And if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. And if you'd like to see new videos every week, subscribe. Again, to all of you out there who take the time out of your busy schedule to watch my content, I greatly appreciate it. And I hope to see you next time. Bye, everybody.